Hi there, and welcome back to the Creative Endeavor Podcast. This is the podcast bringing you inspiring stories from creative professionals from around the world. It's real conversations with real artists. And in this episode, I'm welcoming back Mark Maggiore. I spoke to him some time ago on the podcast and I had such a blast getting to know him. Then he kindly agreed to come back and talk with me once again. And I really wanted to hit him up about that thing that I think we all saw. You know, the art world's ablaze talking about this, that amazing sellout show that he just had. Now, I'm sure that must have broken some sort of record. I was following along on social media, just scrolling on my phone across his feed. I found myself just cheering, almost punching the air, just going, yes, this is amazing. Now, I don't know about you, but I get really fired up when I see somebody kicking massive goals and succeeding in such a profound way. And I wanna hear a little bit of the insight as to what got them to where they are. And here in this interview, Mark did not disappoint. I wanted to ask him about the lead up to that show and some of his feelings afterward, what his definition of success is, but also some of the things that are facing him as an artist in this day and age. Now, I don't know about you, but AI it seems to be this thing that's continuing to come up in conversations that I'm having. And it's, you know, something I'm a little bit concerned about. I got some reservations about this, but you know, whether you think it's an asset or a threat, I'm keen to hear what you think. Hit me up in those comments down below. But I want to ask some of the artists that come on the podcast here, like Mark, what's he think about this? And what are some of the things that he's concerned about or, you know, looking forward to? Maybe there's a shift here. Maybe there's something that would help him in his creative process. It's really interesting to hear his take on AI in particular. Now, if you're not already following Mark online, I've put a link to his Instagram and his website in the description down below. Make sure you're following him there. He does some incredible work. These epic cowboy Western scenes. You know, you've probably been following him already. It's just amazing stuff. So he gave us a little bit of an insight into how he creates his paintings as well. That was really cool to get into some of the art shop talk. Now, just a shout out and a big thank you to my academy students who knew well ahead of time that I was gonna interview Mark. And so they got some questions to me that I was able to put to him in regards to the technical side and his approach to painting and how he creates some of these amazing Western scenes. So without further ado, let's get into this podcast. Here's Mark Maggiore in The Creative Endeavor. So many things that I want to dive into, but first I just want to say welcome back to the podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to have your company again, and just thank you so much for making the time. Yeah, sure. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It's good timing because I just finished the painting like three days ago, and I'm kind of, you know, taking a few days in between always like to kind of like regroup, know what's up, Brilliant. so uh, doing other things. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah, it's, I'm good. Awesome. Well, I, I've got not only some questions that I'm dying to ask you, but I also have some of my online academy students who have hit me up and I let them know in advance that, hey, look, I'm going to be interviewing Mark again. We're going to be going here round two. Why don't you give me some questions that you would like to ask Mark, uh, some of the things about his work, his past, you know, how he got started and some of the, the latest developments. Um, so I'll just be asking these kind of at random as we go, but there are some fantastic questions that have come through and I'm thinking, oh man, that, that, that was a really good question. I, I, I'm really excited to put some of these to you, but the thing that I'm really interested in and it, look, I, I think we all saw it. It was just such an amazing moment watching some of those posts that you were making on Instagram from the, the show that you had in recent months. And that must have broken some sort of record. But I was just there as I was looking at these posts, watching these sales come through, looking at how amazing the paintings were, just kind of cheering, just going, yes, that was just so inspiring. I, I, I really wanted to know, like, can you describe that moment to me of that show and what that, what that felt like being there, you know, the culmination of all this hard work, and then you're there at opening night you know, watching you on some of those videos, 
It was just like, you could see it almost wash over you in a way that it was like, it was just kind of sinking in and this excitement was then sort of building. Describe that moment for me. Well, so it's, it's um, I mean, you know, your painter as well, you know, the yeah. feeling, of, uh, this, this path that it comes from like the building of an image, an idea, and then putting on canvas and then, you know, put everything you got to make a great image and then knowing it's going to a show, so it's going to be seen by so many people, and you know they're going to see your work in the flesh. So there's all those those variables that are get in the mix where you put everything you have to make sure you you done your best, and and then comes a time where you know painting gets in the frame, and then you bring it to the gallery, and then it's not in your hands anymore. You've done everything you could, and uh, it's in the end of you know <laughs> of a higher power. <laughs> Um, and it's it's the most stressful because you don't have a control of that. Um, you know, everything else it's it's under your control and it's 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 about you know it, it's it's just up to you to make it the best you can, but then after that you don't know. So it's random and it's stressful. So yeah, I think from from the time, you know, a few days before the show, you know, the anxiety was kind of building for me. I was like wondering, you know, if it's you know, if it's gonna sell. And I had not sailed real pain like paintings in about two years at that moment because i was kind of like um working and i i i voluntarily dried the market to make sure you know nobody was getting anything and and buyers or collectors will be pretty hungry for the show and so that we even were questioning with my gallery stuff of you know price point and it was like well it's, it's difficult because you are you know, kind of, you know, famous people know you, people want your worry, but then, you know, your last paintings didn't sell for that amount. So it's like, we have to find an in-between that makes sense for now a day and your status, but also, you know, for buyers, the boat, you know, like two years ago, not being like a huge gap of like, oh, the price of race. So we kind of priced everything, I would say, uh, you know, kind of at the really the, the below limit where I was like feeling comfortable with it. And, but I was still stressed, stressed about it. Like the morning, I remember the morning of the day, I was like, are we sure like putting those, those estimates on the auction? Is it too much? I was like, so I was concerned somehow, you know, like if it was gonna, and then the whole show happened and then the sales, like first, first painting goes for auction because like three or four times above the estimate and then all like that, all the way to like all, and it was just kept on going and I, I couldn't even freaking believe it. But I, I, as soon as it gets in it, you it's in a row, it reminds me of, of, you know, like I love soccer and it's like, you know, it would be like a, a, a big game and it's like the final and it's so stressed. And then all of a sudden your team put one goal, two goal, three goals. And you're like, Wah! you know, it's just getting better and better. And you know, you know, the victory is here and you're like thriving through it. And this like moment of bliss where everything is just flowing so well. So um, yeah, but that was it. I, it was it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Fantastic, man. It's it's interesting that to hear. So so it it wasn't a result that you were expecting. You were kind of nervous going into it. Not at all, man. I mean, again, I had made my little calculation. You know, there was a lot of stake because we I hadn't been selling paintings for a long time and. You know, of course, you, you know, when you put all your life in, in, in that, you, you, were, you kind of hope that you're going to get some kind of return because, you know, we got to we gotta keep going. And um, so, yeah, of course, I was I was very anxious. And um, and then, you know, all those record broken it just was crazy. And so with the work itself, like your, your paintings are stunning, man. They're they're really beautiful. And the work itself, what were some of the things that you were exploring, some of the stuff that you were you were trying to kind of feel your way around? Because, you know, putting together a, a show, a body of work, that's a huge undertaking. You know, obviously you've got a a a subject and a style that you're 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 into and you you're eaten up with. But was there something that you were trying to push a bit further, explore a bit more in your work? Yeah, um, it's just, so I feel like I was when I started the paint Western, I was really focused on the figures and and, you know, the background was was the background and uh, literally the background, like behind the figure. Um, and of course, as my career, you know, developed and I was, you know, painting more and more subjects, even changing the subject because I started with with cowboys and then. I, I switched, not a switch, but I, I slowly got into Native Americans because I was living in Taos and 
um, it felt natural. But then living actually in New Mexico, and you know, being uh, inside that subject all day and feeling the importance of the elements, um, I slowly wanted to maybe diminish the size of my figures and put more and faces on on the background and the background becoming you know more of a foreground somehow. Um, mm -hmm. So it all kind of get to the peak on, on that painting I did with this uh, uh, very small subject, Native American, and then the cloud was huge. And and we had a really good, I had a really good reaction on that on, when I posted on my Instagram. I remember thousands of comments um, because it was different all of a sudden. And so at the show for me, that was kind of like the pinnacle of the show. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that direction because um, taking it from there, I'm probably going to keep exploring and, you know, that way, uh, you know, landscapes and, and maybe, yeah, reducing a little bit the, the size of the figures. Uh, not all the time, but it's, it's interesting. And so that's a nice little, you know, route that I, I'm really enjoying exploring. Brilliant. Really, it's, it's really, it's awesome to hear how sort of doorways open up and opportunities present themselves as you're developing the work. You're like, oh, that looks cool. Let's, let's go over here and explore that direction. Exactly. I mean, yeah. it, it is what it is. We kind of follow our inspirations and, um, and things have to make sense for, for what you do. You know, sometimes people ask you, um, you know, you're going to paint other things in, you know, you're like, sure. I'm inspired by a lot of things, but then does it make sense to paint it? Like, how do I feel painting it? Do I, is it good for me? Is it something that, and it's, I've kind of learned to just accept, you know, the things that I'm good at and, and that's what I keep doing. And um, obviously I'm, I'm good at doing this. So I'm enjoying doing it. So why absolutely try to do something else when, you know, there's so much more I could do in that style and that genre, because it's, obviously very inspiring for me so yeah it's that's so cool man to hear because i mean you can tell that 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 you're loving what you're doing that's that's awesome and look I, i've got a question here from Lori, uh and she wants to know and, and just in regards to this show specifically how long did it take you to get paintings ready for your recent show at legacy gallery and uh, did he continue to generate income while he was saving paintings for the show mm -hmm. yeah so I think we had this conversation uh, on the previous podcast, but um, I have a very strong print market. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm doing those print sales twice a year, um, try to keep it something special and, and very uh, exciting for, for the fans uh, and collectors. And um, so, yeah, luckily this is, this is a, an important source of income. And uh so I, I'm able because of the prints uh, to decide and not, you know, I could not paint for a year if I want uh, mm -hmm. because that sustains it. Uh, it might not be like that forever. And you know? I'm always like, you know, very um, aware of, of all that. But so far the market is good. And so I, I, I keep doing it. A lot of people keep asking for it. That's also the thing I'm very, um, I'm trying to be very aware of, of, of the audience and, and what people and I'm keep constantly gaining followers and the followers are are new buyers because it, you know somebody who just started following me two months ago they didn't do the sale of December so they want to print now so that's why the sale of June is cool and then they can have one and and so on so um yeah this is cool and it it's great to not have to rely just on paintings so I worked on the gallery show for about two years and a half uh, and I was I was selling little sketches sometimes, and I might have done like one commission, but most of it it was I was saving each painting for the show. So yeah, it it, it is uh, it can be challenging, uh, but um, it, it, I was lucky to have the print market to help me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you, you've you've got to you've got to also be a little bit business minded about it too, don't you? I mean, to keep everything going and because it's, it's a really, I mean, it's a fast paced world now. There's so much stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff kind of vying for our attention as artists, but in order to keep the thing going, you know, I found with my own business that you've got to have those multiple revenue streams that if I was just a painter selling paintings, that that is sometimes it's kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket, right? 
it's you know can be a bit difficult yeah it depends also of your needs and um you know if you're if you're a single guy and you're young and you you know you just live in an apartment and you don't need much to live and be happy then it's fine you can do that but you know we're getting older i'm 45 and i have three daughters and wife and you know family and all kinds of things so of course you have to generate income and try to make it you know big somehow that you know everybody is is happy and everything's good so um I keep pushing and pushing, you know, it just uh, makes me happy to um, provide for the family and all that. that. That's enough of an incentive to kind of like get you awake in the morning and get, go for it. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I, that, that didn't really click into place for me until I had my son. And then I'm like, oh, it's go, it's go, it's go time. <laughs> and that's exactly. I mean, yeah. you want to give them everything you can. Like that's yeah. just, so weird. yeah. Yeah human yeah. nature <laughs> it is man it is um let's let's focus for a little bit on the work i've got loads of technical questions that have come through first i want to ask you about your source material and we did speak a little bit about that and and i've heard other podcasts with you where you've spoken about how you get your images here but i i just for the sake of this podcast i'd really Love to hear some more about that. I got a question here from Trey. He says, how does he maintain a consistency in reference and ideas? And uh, how, how do you, Mark, um, define what idea and or reference is better than something else? Like wh when you find that golden moment, how do you know that, aha, that's it? So what are, what are some of those things that you're looking for at some of those visual cues? And, and just on a, on a, just to add on to that, you know, you have quite a process for getting the stuff it's not just a matter of taking a snap i know and oh i'm gonna paint that one there's a lot that goes into actually capturing that idea first i'd love to hear more about that mm -hmm. um yeah so i mean obviously the the process of of getting references is for me the most important and most interesting part um because it's human experiences and i think that's what kind of like feeds your soul and and it all has to go from there. Um, so yeah, I, I really do like to create those moments, you know, by going out there, meeting people, and and setting to setting up photo shoots. Um, it's not always easy to do it because you know we're super busy, and and you know it takes a lot. A lot. Recently, I also have lots of back problems. So I can't be as much as um, rock and roll as I used to be, you know, jumping there and jumping there. Uh, but hopefully it'll get better. Um, but anyway, so it's 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 one thing to like create that. And then when you come back with all your material, you know, you've been like so inspired and, and, and kind of like electrified by this, this moment or those days or whatever you've done with, with models. Um, you go back to your computer, start looking at things. There is this magic that you know you've been capturing somehow, somewhere. And I know when I shoot, I, I'm always super like. So sometimes I see things during the photo shoot when I'm like, oh, that's, this was great. But sometimes it's even better. It's like there's been like a like a light effect or something that happened as you were shooting that you were not maybe aware of. You know that ray of light that hit the face, the thing, and the horse, the reflection on the. F and this you see it when you see your your photos, and you're like, wow, okay, this is it. The crazy part is that when I do a photo shoot for maybe I shoot for a whole day or an afternoon, you come back with you know sometimes more than a thousand pictures, and you go through it you're going to have maybe two or three paintings from that, like three or four major, that's it. Yeah. Um, I only had one photo shoot one in my life where I had maybe 10 paintings out of it because it, also it was like a whole day, different outfit, different location. It was a huge day. So I, I had a lot of materials from that. But uh, it, it could be frustrating because you're like, oh, you know, I spent all this time and money to like go there and, and shoot stuff and, and it's, but, you know, it doesn't matter because you, that's, you know, those paintings are enough. And, you know, if it's three major piece, then that's enough. Then you do another photo shoot and go somewhere else. So um, I really do enjoy that, that part of the process. Um, and I don't know if there was more to that question. No, that, um, that, that really sums it up. I mean, it's just the, the amount of effort, though, that you go to 
is pretty extraordinary. You know, it, it's it's because it, it sounds a lot like you're composing also, you know, outside. You do have a certain intention, but you're also leaving the door open for the surprise to happen for that for that moment. Yeah. hundred percent. I think that is so important and um and maybe we'll talk about ai after that and you know maybe there's question about that or something that because it's so oh, present right now and there's man. so much to talk about it's it's fascinating yeah and, uh, yeah and i i believe that there is um uh, is there is still that thing um uh, that is possible with this process of work that is not that ai doesn't give yet this is the the yeah the magic of things that you know happen through human connection and, yeah. and I think the connection to an experience that one person did you know like me going out there meeting this cowboy shooting him his story his land going back painting it people seeing the painting they see the guy he's a real guy he lives there there's a, all this connection the human soul people mm. feel Feel that and that's called emotion and that's what art is about it's not just about you know big impressive stuff or it's impressive oh wow this is it's great what ai can create it's impressive you don't have to go anywhere anymore you can get everything on your computer yeah, yeah but you're gonna miss the component which is the human connection and we are still humans you know what i mean so this that. is it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this, yeah. that's it. You know, of yeah. course it's a great tool. I mean, I'm changing subject. I don't want to change subject. No, 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 no. I no that that let's go let's go there. Let's important to, to, to talk about this because in yeah. the process of creation and it's great. And but but people need to understand that it's not enough. It's not enough. It needs yeah. to still remain a tool. And mm -hmm. I think I think already people are realizing it. And um if you just if you're missing the human experience, something's not gonna connect, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, it's the same for movies, you know. There's movies when they put the millions of new effects nonstop, and it's like pew 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 pew. <laughs> yeah. And those movies, you watch them, and wow, it took so much. And then you're like, do you think you remember those movies after? No. No. And then you can have two persons sitting on the bench talking about love and you cry and you're going to remember this movie for the rest of your life. Yeah. And it was nothing. It was just two person talking, you know, yeah. versus a billion dollar movies with all the new effects in the trend that are like incredible. Uh, and I think for art, it's exactly the same. So, you know, yeah. be reassured painters out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's no, it's wonderful to hear, you know, your heart, you know, yeah. you're going to gonna remain standing because there's i mean let's face it man there, there's a lot of people out there that are losing their minds there's a lot of people that are really excited about it there's there's people that are going well i'm gonna use ai to compose my paintings now and or now i'm gonna go off in this direction and i i was first of all like really curious about it personally and then i was thinking okay well yeah maybe i can see there's some danger here even just from a business standpoint i can see this is going to displace a lot of artists but there's a certain aspect to it that, you know, as you were saying there, you, you can't delegate that to a machine. You can't delegate that connection that you have to subject to a machine. You know, I've said um, to my students that I, I believe art is three things mainly. You know, you're providing a product, you create a thing, right? You provide a service with your thing. You can do something, you can decorate a space, you can, you know, you, you can use your artistic skills to do stuff. And then, the, but the third third part is the process. Now, AI might have you whipped on two of those things. It can create a product, right? And it can create a service. Cool. Well, let it have that. But the last thing that it can't do is it the process of you being engaged and connecting. It's like it's like trying to get someone else to eat your lunch for you. It's 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 absolutely pointless. Exactly, and 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 we've experienced we've ex I've experienced it personally so that's why i'm referring to it it's like mm. i've seen artists that are already on it that i've been even communicating with that are making images on ai and they're really good at it you know you see the image first glance if you think it's a painting you're like what the f this is insane and then you're like oh it's ai generated right away my interest dropped like 70 percent yeah and then i look at the image and nothing is happening 
mm. in my heart, in my belly, in my soul, nothing is happening. It's a great image. Next one. Mm. Because but if I knew that this image was painted by a guy in his studio, that the woman on the painting or whatever was his muse or wife, and, she, and you all of a sudden I see the image in a total different light. And I would I would probably connect with it more. Yeah. But people need to understand that is that what touches us is the work of the artist is this you know all this those stories let's refer let's give an example with soccer again let's say now they're gonna do players that are like robots and they can put the, the ball in the goal every time put them on you know a team can buy this player and he's, he's yeah. with you he has legs and he can put the ball in so you win every time yeah. Yeah, but there's no more game nobody gives it you want to see the human struggling to put the ball in the goal. That's what yeah. the whole game is about. If there is a solution and what, well, who cares? And so, you know, I, I, I get it. Like I saw this new Photoshop thing. You can like add up stuff to your background. Cool. I'm going to spend less time creating that on my own. If I wanted more of that mountain there, I can, uh, Photoshop can create it for you. That's a good tool. Awesome. I want to change maybe this. Great. But that's not enough. That's the yeah. tool then you need to, you know, put your heart to it and, and make it happen. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm not too, I think it, AI is more scary for other things in other fields, you know, where like, I feel like, you know, it's getting a beast, it's getting, a, it's becoming a pretty incredible beast for other things. Like, how are we going to, you know, think and our kids, how, you know, they, we're going to keep them, you know, to learn how to think from themselves, how to write for themselves. If they can have everything provided by AI, what, what are the brains going to become? Like a freaking, like a mushy marshmallow, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's, the, that's the danger of that, is that it keeps making humans weak. And, and as a species, we can't become weak because then we're going to become woolly. You know, this movie when they're all in- I was, uh, oh man, I was just thinking that as you said that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we got to fight yeah. because- if we let it go and use this, and you know, it's the same for painters. If you're a painter, you're gonna use AI, then you're gonna stop painting, then you're not gonna know how to paint anymore. And then too bad for you. You know, what are you gonna yeah. do? Just be on your computer, punch back like that. Yeah, it, it oh, man, exactly, exactly. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, so what would you say to some some artists out there if they were young, uh, you know, starting artists? I mean, let, let's say you started today and, and so AI comes onto the scene. You can see you can get a little bit of an edge, do something. Do you think you could resist that temptation to, to just go, well, because there, there's something to it, like there's a convenience to it. But I, I, I personally, I like putting in the work. I like doing the boring thumbnails and all that. The stuff. reward as yeah. a personal, you know, are you going to brag that you have this beautiful image you created on AI? What about it? Like you had great prompt. That was your <laughs> skill, to like put some cool prompt. There's it's just nothing. So it's like, OK, cool. But if everybody can do it, there is nothing to it. You know, what's great is to see when somebody, you know, you, you're in a live, live drawing class and you see all the students in this model and you see how people try to get the space right. And then all of a sudden this guy is, is, is beautiful what he's doing. So it's, it's emotional. Yeah. You know, it, there is no point to like, you know, create a new life, new drawing with AI. Cool. Or what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm as well like, you know, like getting potatoes or do whatever. Speaking of prompts, though, Mark, I, I guarantee you're now a prompt on AI. I, I guarantee. Give me cowboy painting uh, in the style of Maggiore. What you can do is that uh, you can do art by. When you do art by mm -hmm. and you put a name on an artist, then you know if he, he knows it or not. So he knows some artists very well, some he doesn't. Mark Maggiore doesn't. When you do art by Mark Maggiore, it's some weird. So okay. if, you do, like, if you do art bar by Joaquin Soroya, he does like a Soroya thing, like for wow. sure, because he knows yeah. it. But Mark Majori doesn't yet. Cool for me. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I but do again, I don't care. People want to generate Mark Majori's painting. Cool. You know, it's just like whatever. You're, you're, you're doing your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating thing, man. I think we're seeing a, a, a real changing world on all fronts to do with AI. But I think what's going to happen is there will be a knee-jerk reaction. And, and you know, there's, there's a few that are waking up to it. I, I think it's going to get more and more people because people are going to start to realize. I mean, back to your analogy of robots playing soccer, they'd be like, this sucks. This sucks, you know. Let's go back to the let's go back to that park bench with the two lovers talking. Let's let's actually feel something here. Let's connect. 
Yeah. So um, let's let's talk. I mean, about about image creation here, about about putting the painting together. Because I, I've got two questions here. I'm actually really interested to know this as well. You've got you've got a beautifully luminous quality in the paintings themselves. And so, you know, when I'm teaching, one thing that I, I talk about continually is like, okay, look, hold back with your tone, hold back with your saturation. Then when you when you put it in there, you create this moment and you you get this feeling like the the, the color and the lights exploding off off the painting. But when I look at your work, the the whole thing just feels like it's bursting with life and light and, and energy. So I got a I got a question here from Barbara, and she wanted to know. How do you get the glow in the painting? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question, and it's difficult to to answer. Um, I always refer to my grandma, and she's Italian, and you know she was making the best pasta in the world. And how many times did we ask her, "Can you write the recipe so we can try to make it at home?" And she's like, uh, and, and you don't ever get the recipe because she doesn't know how she does it and i kind of think it's the same for me with painting i don't know how i do it i just do it and of course i apply some rules that are like super you know classic and i've learned over the years um you know about you know uh kind of like you know the difference of the tones and you know bouncing warm and cold constantly and and also the the, the ratio of of light and dark in an image you know the kind of trying to apply to like the one third all the time so yeah. it's either one third light or or one third dark but it kind of like just playing with that all the time and it's again something that is very uh sensitive like um like i say i'm always working um small and i do my images first i work on photoshop i play it composes stuff so i make sure like it really appeals to my eye and i also make sure that every time i paint the subject um i sketch it before so i know that you know the lights and shadows are playing well on the subject um and that's fascinating because when you look at three poses you know if somebody moves on a horse and goes like this and you do one two three pictures mm -hmm. the lights completely different in each of them even if it was like the same moment uh and one of them is going to be great and maybe the one right after is not great but you have to test that by sketching it to kind of look at it instead of just jumping in it oh a cool photo i'm going to paint it yeah but maybe there's a better one uh where the light reflects better and um so yeah, that that's the thing. Um, more is yeah, make sure that um, the 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 light has a path through the painting, and you know it's bouncing at different places, and it's um, so yeah. That's that's amazing. I mean, looking at some of these images, they're so striking, and hearing you talk about the relationship of your tones, your dark to light. So is that a cinematic thing? Would that be something that came from your film days that you're like? You know, yeah, because the color relationships as well in your paintings are are extraordinary. You know, I, I see such strong use of complementary opposites in, in a lot of your paintings where you're balancing these effects. So so how much of that, yeah, came from that cinematic background and, and then you've kind of taken it and run with it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think by um, storyboarding a lot, I did a lot of storyboard and, and always... Try to make sure everything is is very simple and at the right place, and that is always like dark shadows, dark shadows, dark shadows, dark shadows all the time. And um, and yeah, the, I play a lot with some basic color rules, but I think everybody kind of does that, but maybe not. I don't know. It's just uh, all the impressionist rules. Um, I play with it. Uh, mostly at the end of the process um, when the painting is pretty much finished. I do a lot a la prima, but sometimes I do a second coat. And at the end, just an example, if, if there is bushes in the front and, you know, some of the bushes, like you think my last painting, there is like just a little bit of light that was hitting the top of the bushes on the left part, but all the bright part was dark. 
So it's the shadows, it's like golden hour. So everything is in the shade, usually it's in the purples, you know, bluish, purplish. But at the end, when I'm when the thing is kind of you know good at my eye, then I play with purples and I create like a bunch of completely like crazy purples. Mm-hmm. And I just go poop, 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 three little thing. And then I, I change and I make more like magenta purplish and boom, boom, two or three there. To kind of like make those 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 shadows vibrate like, and this is just impressionism, you know, that's like the basic rules of impressionism, but you don't see that when you see my paintings on Instagram because they're small. So that's the thing you see when you see them in person and you're like, oh, you put all this. But when you go far, it works. It just makes it vibrant. Because there's, you know, I always like to change the the color in the same like say that you know this bush is lit where the light hits i'm not gonna make like a a bright color like white and yellow and just make all my highlights i make like 20 different type of highlights i you know mix the yellow and put a pink in it and then a little bit of like orangey in it and so it's just like to keep like always having things vibrating Mm. Um, i got this idea even i'm from painting outside but also on, on working with Photoshop. And I've, I remember very young, like, you know, and even when we were in art school and we were Photoshop stuff and you zoom in it and you want to click a color, every time you click, it's different. <laughs> you know, if you like zoom in like a piece of grass, you click on it, you get 30 greens that are showing up. And so I would like kind of use this when I paint and, and never having the same color. And sometimes people are like, Oh, when you paint that rock, did you use magenta, crimson, and this and that? I'm like, I don't know, man. I have, you know, I have, I try to have a limited palette of color, uh, colors. So I have maybe, you know, one red. I have a king crimson. I use a crimson, a red, and then a ma- ultramarine. And I just play with mixing things differently. Yeah. And uh, to to never have the same colors for things. It's every time it's different. Everything is different. If you use green, it's never going to be the same green all the way. Maybe I do a first wash of green mm. and I start like making it different. So I don't know if that answers. No, no, that 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 does answer it. It's it's interesting to hear how much goes into it. I mean, and it's it, isn't it sad? I mean, you spend so much time on a painting and then you're posting it to Instagram. Now, of course, you got the original. You can show it in a gallery and and, and have an exhibition or it's a commission for somebody. So it will be enjoyed. But you know, unfortunately, all I've been able to see of your work is on this little tiny screen. And then, um, you know, on on the internet, like I pulled up your website here. Um, and so it's great to hear what goes into it because, I, you know, when I'm creating a painting and then photograph it, it, and it reduces down. I'm like, no, there's so much more that went into that. There's a dimension there when you're actually standing in front of the original that most will just never get to appreciate. And it, I find it kind of sad, you know. I know, but you know those paintings exist, and um, and and hopefully, you know they maybe they have, uh, you know this this museum in Arizona was asking me that maybe one day we do a kind of already like a retrospective and talk to different buyers that you know bought painting over the last eight years, and maybe they would you know give the painting for a show, and and maybe we do a show that is not painting to buy, but it's just painting to see and um, it'd be cool you know that kind of initiative so people can actually come and see it that'd be cool let me know when that's happening i'd love to see that um hey so i i've got a question here from andrew neeland and so we were talking a little bit about color there and he he wanted to know okay what are your must-haves? Your, your subjects, the lighting scenarios are varied from like middle of the day on some of them, some nocturnes. Uh, you've got some that are, you know, that golden hour that are just so striking. But do you have any, well, as you're changing up your painting, your subject, are you, and you're changing up your palette, do you have anything that's like, not every painting's got this, that, or the other? What, what are your go-to must-haves? What's your favorite tube of oil paint? Colors? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm just um, mostly I have this simple range of color because again, I always like to tell people that when you print a picture on a color printer, he only has three colors. <laughs> yeah. And he, 
is able to master the print. So it's all about mixing the color the right way in order to get. So you don't need like when I, I'm so sorry, it keeps like I don't know how to desynchronize this thing with my computer. It's the computer rings. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I'm I'm trying to um not having when I see people that have like you know 20 colors on their palette, I don't know how they do it because I would get lost. So I, I prefer to keep it very simple. And like I say, sometimes at the end, um, even I go to the store, like if I, you know, I was painting those clouds and there was a bunch of interesting oranges on the references and, and I felt like I was missing something to make it even more vibrant. So I went to the store and I kind of like bought three different oranges and I came back and my clouds were almost finished, but I went on the highlights and just kind of like, met those little nuances with different oranges um so yeah i'm just like simple colors um the basics i don't i don't there, there's a purple that i love that i always put in my palette uh from the store bleak in in the us i don't um and it's a it's called violet gray uh, violet gray and it's super it's i don't know i've tried uh, every brand of this kind of like like purple violet thing uh but bleaks as the best like it's so saturated um mm. and so i have in my i have i bought you know i always buy them by pack of 10 and i just i always have it like so no matter what the, the color of the day if i do it like you say a scene at noon or a scene at night or there's always going to be this purple in it because it works all the time like if it's in a bright day it works very well with greens if it's a nocturne, it can actually work to, you know, even on like the sky, you could put a little. So it's a great color to have. Fantastic. Who makes that? Sorry. Bleak. Bleak. Oh, okay. Violet gray. Bleak. All right. It just, it just sold out. I was in my studio. I will show you, but I'm in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. That's, um, that's really, um, that's really interesting, man. And, and so when you're painting your, you're putting your paintings together. This is just something that I'd love to know because, you know, your style is so, so slick and it, it like your edges are really clean. They're just, yeah, I, I don't mean to gush too much here, man, but I'm, I'm a big fan. But I, I'm looking at this and I, I'm trying to think about this as a bit of a detective looking throughout the piece going, is he using synthetics or bristles or both? So let's, uh, let me ask you about your brushes that you're using to actually apply the paint. Let's get a little bit in the nitty gritty and the technical here. What, um, what are some of your go-to favorites? I imagine you're using a range though, right? Yeah, I have, I mean, I have very um, basic, I, I work with rosemary brushes and I use the evergreens and we're actually, they're coming up with a set for me uh, and it's been in the pipe for a long time. I think it's gonna release soon. I don't know what's happening with that, but I have to talk with them. Um, but yeah, I'm using three sizes of, of the evergreen all the time, the, the zero, two and four. Um, and I have this brush that from Blake as well, that is like a $1 brush or $2, they're super cheap. They have, uh, they call uh, script something, I forget the name. Um, and they're, yeah, scholar, scholars, I forgot, man, I'm the, I'm the worst with names. Um, but yeah, the point is really good because it's really pointy and it's long enough. Um, and I'm buying them by hundreds and they make me, they last me a day, not more. <laughs> so I throw them away all the time. Yeah. but they're pretty cheap and so we've tried to recreate those with rosemary for my set and i did a really good job at it uh so in the set there's going to be a, a similar brush that we're calling the majori uh and it's really really cool so um awesome uh, yeah. but um so i pretty much work with those three and when i do my clouds i use a bristle uh with those hair that are now forbidden here in America. So that sucks because they don't ship them here anymore. Oh, wow. I, don't know why the, the, I think it's the hair they're using um, or some, so um, they, they can ship in Europe and then you have to bring them back in your luggage <laughs> or yeah. have a friend of yours sending them. I think they can ship them here. That's what I understood. Um, 
so yeah, I have a bunch of those, but those last for a long time because I only use them for um, for when I do clouds. And sometimes in the beginning, but more and more now, I just do everything with my brush as I go. I just blend as I go, and um, yeah. But yeah, I don't. I don't have many brushes. I'm not the guy with like they're all the same. All my brushes are the same. I buy a box of hundreds, and that's all I use. Mm. And my brushes are dying pretty quick. Like I'm, I'm usually like I say, even a rosemary brush they last me like two days, one day, one brush, one session wow. of like seven hours and then i kind of clean it and in the morning i try it again i'm like eh, it's not as good so i take a new one and because you're you know they're the shape's better yeah so maybe yeah. i'm too rough with it i don't know <laughs> it sounds like you're beating the crap out of your brushes man because <laughs> i mix colors non-stop i spend yeah. so much time mixing that they're always like I, you know I, so i think they're they're just getting like a little curly and it's not good yeah there's nothing like a fresh brush though that that's 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 true. I'm excited. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah. And if you you know, and you do something super important, mm. and you know, it's gonna be like that one tail. You have to have all the hair perfect. You can't do that with a brush that was two two days old. For me, it needs to be new and and nice. So. Yeah, it's exciting to hear about your brush set coming out. I I'd love to check that out. I, I got to ask you, I'm cringing and I know other people listening to, to this are cringing already because they're like, Tish, don't ask him. Don't ask him. Have you ever used the Tish dagger before? What is that? Dude, it's my brush from Rosemary and Co. <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm gonna have him send you one because that's uh th that's that's a cool brush. That's a cool brush. And you could think of me while you're painting clouds. You'd be like, oh yeah, th this is actually a badass brush. It's one of my favorites. And um, you know, like like you, like you having that back and forth process with them. You know, we had a long drawn out back and forth process of prototypes, and they'd ship me something. It takes a while being down here in New Zealand, you know, getting things back and forth, but um it, it, we ended up getting this thing that's like, it, it was just such a nice, nice brush to use in the end. And I'm just like, ah, oh, dang, this is my favorite. The small ones didn't work as well, but there's like this middle range. They're able to reproduce it over and over. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, I, but this is the thing that I found with Rosemary and Co. Like I'm sure you found as well, is that you know that when you pick up that brush, the consistency across the, the range, you know what it's going to do. And th their, their quality is just phenomenal. It's incredible. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I guess I got to get it. <laughs> well, oh, we'll hook you up, man. We'll hook you up. Um, let, let me ask you a little bit about just kind of a career, because I, I get this question all the time, and Esteban has, has asked this. And um, the question is, you know, if, if somebody's not studying arts in university, what path should they follow? You know, there, there's so many options that are open to people nowadays, especially youngsters kind of coming up and they want to be full-time artists. But I still find that there's this, this kind of locked in mentality where it's, it's almost like this trajectory that people have had in their minds from 50 years ago. It's like, I'm going to go da 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 and then success. But what, what advice would you give to people that were, you know, just starting out their career? Should they go to art school? Should they study or should they kind of forge their own path? Well, yeah, especially nowadays when there is so many possibilities to call yourself artist. Um, I think the more you know, the better you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's like, you know, if you want to become a chiropractor, uh, you can decide to do the, the two months program that's going to teach you how to crack somebody. And then you put your plate in your chiropractor, or you can go to medicine study for university, do three years there, learn everything about human body. Or, and then after five, seven years, you call yourself chiropractor. Imagine the difference of result for the client. If you are being manipulated by somebody that did the two months program or somebody that studied for seven years and knows everything about human bodies and science and it's different. Mm. So it's exactly the same for an artist. You have to learn everything you can to widen your range of knowledge in order to perform and, and do something that might be different. Because the key for career as an artist is to find something that speaks to you, but also different than what everybody does. And the more you're gonna swallow, you know, knowledge and and you know different artists and learning everything, um, the better you're gonna become. And so, again, like 
we were talking with AI, about AI earlier on, and that's like that's insane danger because you're like you know if you're young and you can like you say create a reference with AI, but then if you don't know anything under that, you don't have a structure. It's like building the roof of a house without foundation. It's not gonna hold. And um, so I think every young artist should take this journey as a in the hard path. Like the harder the path you make for yourself, the better outcome you're gonna have. And I know it's very difficult to think like that when you're 18 or 19 and it's time to you know get training. Um, but it is a journey. Like I'm 45 and I started to make some good images like eight years ago. You know what I mean? Like before that, I did a lot of things, but to me, when I look back, they were I was still in training. You know, there was references in what I was doing. You could see, oh, this looks like that. This like is influenced by this. It was still waiting on me. And then slowly, you know, you brush it off. And then at some point in your career, you become you. Mm. And that takes a long time. And um, and you can't expect, I know we're in a society where everything is to be right away. You know, it's like Amazon type of thinking. Oh, are you want this? No, 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 no. I can't wait. Yeah, you can't wait, but you have to wait and you have to be patient. You have to take the time to learn uh, and work hard to get there because it's it's a very hard, it's a very hard career to choose. You know, and if my daughter comes to me and say, I, I want to be an artist, I'd be like, all right, well, you, you can try. We, you know, you, we can give you all the chances you can, and, but there's no guarantee. It's not like, you know, I want to become a doctor. Okay, well, you can become a doctor. You do this and this and that. You study for 10 years and then you can be a doctor. Artist, you don't know. It's, it's very abstract, as you know. And what does it mean? It's that people are going to buy your stuff that you're going to make a living out of it. We have no idea about that. So you can become a great artist. That's one thing. But then the career is different because career means, yeah, that you can make a living out of it. And that's that's another story. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many different paths to this as well. And I see, you know, there's also the, 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 the range and, and the amount of success really does depend on how you're showing up and what you're putting into it. Right. You know, we, we can see so many different examples, you know, you put in a little, you get a little, if anything out, you put in a lot and you're just obsessed and you're on all the time. You almost can't switch it off. It seems like that's where the rewards exist. You know, I, I've, I've been asked by a few people, you know, personally, just from people that thought it was an easy path. And, and like you're saying, to your point, you know, if your daughter comes to you, you know, it's I, I've imagined similar conversations with with my son years to come. I hope he does become an artist, though. Because I, I, I just, I, 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 or not, he might do the opposite. <laughs> he sees yeah. struggle and he wants to a different life. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they you know what they're gonna take from us. Uh, you know exactly, exactly. No, but he might come to me and say, "No, I've seen what you've gone through. That would suck. I'm not doing that." <laughs> I know exactly. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's yeah. Like we're always like thinking of like what do we do, blah blah blah. You know, maybe they don't want to do that. Yeah. And um, but maybe they will. Maybe it's gonna be stronger than them. So. Look, you, you've reached this point, Mark, and it's it's extraordinary. And so, so I, I would really love to know. And I, somebody has asked this as well from the academy. What is it? What does a typical day look like for you? Because I mean, from the outside looking in, and I'm sorry if I'm projecting here, but it, it does look like you're dialed in, you're locked in, you seem obsessed about your art, art creation, but. How does that typical day seem to flow for you on a typical day that you're painting? How many hours are you putting in? Hmm. Um, well, so during the day I'm working, yeah, pretty much from like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's like the time I'm working. But during the day, you know, I take my lunch break, I cook my food, you know, I take even a nap after, after lunch for 10, 15 minutes, power nap. Then at 3 p.m. I go pick up my daughter in school. That takes me like, you know, 20 minutes, bring her back here. And I go back in the studio. And then, yeah, when it's like time, my stomach usually re regulate my day, you know. <laughs> it's like 6 p.m. I start feeling, okay, it's time to think about dinner, blah, blah. And, uh, or we go places, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of regimented like that. Um, I, I wake up very early and do a... Uh, now I'm like doing long walks in the morning. Um, I used to work out, but I, I slowed down now with my back problems. 
so I walk a lot. This is a good time to meditate and, you know, do my like 40 minutes walk here in the park. Um, so yeah, and then get my daughter ready to school and then take her to school. And then when I come back from bring her to school, I, I it's time when I start working. Um, I, uh, I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. That that's just a very important part of my days. Um, I used to listen to music when I painted, but not anymore. It's been four or five years now that I'm I'm listening to audiobooks, and that's I love that. Like really, like uh, you know, I, I get into a, bo a book, and then I kind of like it's it's a hand in hand type of journey. You know, I'm painting, but then I want to listen what's happening. It's so kind of like very, very interesting because you're so lonely when you paint that you kind of need something else you know it can't be just me oh that's yeah that that's so interesting you've hit on a couple of really really interesting points there let me ask you first though what's on your what's on your reading list what's what are some of your favorite titles at the moment or right now yeah for 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 your audiobooks oh yeah so i've been uh i've been um listening to ken follett's like this this author uh, um I've I've listened to so many of his books and they're like epic books, and he has you know he has um, things that go by a trilogy or like you know they go by three or four books and they're all like forty hours listen, and uh, and it's epic stories like one is like starts in like the Viking time and then the next book is the same family but two hundred years later you know in like the beginning of the United Kingdom Empire blah blah and it's like that kind of stuff and. Um, uh, right now I'm listening to the whole thing. Um, same, it was an epic book, but I'm not on the third one. And it's uh, it's happening in America, in Russia and UK in the 60s. So, and everything is linked. So I learned also a lot about it because this guy is super like on point with his story and his stories are, are fictional, but they are linked with the real history. So I kind of love it because I learned also a lot. Um, so I've been kind of obsessed with this guy now for about more than a year. Like during my whole show work, I've listened to all his books. Um, and uh, yeah, I got a lot. I also really like uh, CJ Box. I've, I've listened to the Joe Pickett, you know, all that stuff, which is more like, it's very different. It's more like modern day Western stuff. Um, and, you know, back in the days, I've listened to, you know, summary, like uh, all the Larry McMurtry books and, you know, the Lonesome Dove series and all that. I was, I used to listen to a lot of Western stories, you know, that was, and then I kind of went around a lot and I was needed other things. And so now, I'm, right now I'm on the Ken for that stuff. Uh, but yeah, you know, and I listened to Gone with the Wind, like recently, uh, cause I, you know, I've seen the movie when I was younger and for some reason, I don't know, I was like, oh, I'm just listen to the actual you know, book and it's so great. Like I'm the same, I've learned a lot about, you know, American history and stuff like the Civil War era and it's pretty cool. Fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's, it was interesting to hear you say that, um, that art and, and, and painting and creating your work, it's, it's, it's a lonely thing. It's, it is a really lonely road being an artist. You know, I, I find that I'm I'm pretty much alone all day, except for that those beautiful moments that I have with my family throughout the day, where it's like again regulated by the stomach, right? Oh, it's lunchtime. I better sort that out, you know. But um, I I, I really struggled with that in the beginning, man. Like like just not seeing anybody, and it really messed with my head until I got to to a, to a maturity where I was just like, no, this is my path. I. I found personally, I had to look at the benefits of that solitude. Um, so it's, it's, it's really interesting, but it's, it's like something had to click for me to go, yeah, okay, embrace it. Now walk that path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. There is no other way around, you know, and um, it, it's for me, that's why I'm also, I'm able now to take um, I'm taking like two months off right now. We're going to France and Italy and I'm I'm not going to paint for two months and see people and kind of like, you know, just be around, do things, whatever. Uh, but it's important because I'm, I'm not, it's going to take a minute. I know at the beginning I have anxieties. Like yesterday afternoon, I spent the afternoon packing, thinking of the, the departure and all that. And I feel anxiety just not painting. And I'm like, it's been an hour I'm doing this. Like, should I just go back to the studio? Maybe like check things out. I'm like, no, like you don't have any, you know, you know, just do this right now. It's fine. It's your own time. You know, enjoy that moment of, uh, I was alone at home doing, you know, little things, you know, packing stuff, blah, blah. 
but it, it's very difficult for me to um, surrender that, you know, you don't have to paint every freaking minute of your life. You know, it's, it's not, you know, it's just a very strange thing. Like, what is it that, that I'm trying to, is there a hole somewhere that I need to like <laughs> fill up and by working, 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 I know I, you know, I go through anxieties and I'm a very stressed person. Cause I'm like, always like this, like super tense. Um, and I think painting is, is a time like, when I kind of forget things, you know, I would have like a tummy ache and then I start painting. I forget I have a tummy ache and I don't have a tummy ache anymore because I'm painting. And it's kind of a, right. it's a crazy thing, but yeah, I think it's just like, this is the way I am. <laughs> this, I was put on that earth, maybe just to do that. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it is amazing how it kind of, um, just getting really engaged and present in your creative process that you kind of drown things out. I'll, I'll start painting it at the start of the day. And then just at the end of the day, kind of go, where'd the day go? What happened? You know, you'll see the progress at the easel, but it's like it, the time just flies when you're in that zone locked in, you know? I know. And it's, it's funny when we were living in Taos uh, for two years, we, my, my wife had a, she had an atelier in town was that was linked with a store. And so she would go in the morning and when we meet at the end of the day and she had done so many things, see so many people, had lunch with people, met this people, a whole thing. And me, nothing. I, mean, I, I, I made some progress on the horse head. <laughs> you know, that's my day. I, you know, I don't have much to talk about. So I'll, that's why you need to feed yourself with other things, books, you know, the news, the thing to kind of like, keep yeah. it up having stuff to talk about because you don't see anybody so it's just like yeah, that, that's one of the the things that people don't really think about when they're like oh you know painter's life you know lucky like, you know, yeah i am but it's also yeah there's there's a hard part to it it's a long yeah. solo journey, so yeah so you know I, I i'm really it's quite interesting to hear about your your forced to downtime as a way to kind of almost reset because that that must have been man it must have been such a high coming from that exhibition that you've had it to to now just go wow you know how do you reset after something like that so it's great to hear that you're going to be you're going to be doing a bit of traveling spending some family time seeing some people yeah well it's interesting because you, you know i was telling you i have back problems and i have back problems for a long time it's been 10 years you know in and out but um recently it's been two two months I've, I've been through really like hardcore things and i'm getting a little better now but um i it started like literally a week after the show and um instead of of being free and be like ah oh, you know i had planned a trip to new york with my brother and all and in the plane to new york it started to hit me and then i spent the worst freaking time i had to go get a shot and i couldn't move and, and it feels like all the stress that I was kind of somehow managing, even though it was inside of me, when the thing was finished, instead of feeling free and be happy, oh, cool, you know, it's it kind of like my whole body took it in the back and like, all right. And it's like, you know, you did your last shot and then, and then you die. And so it was just very strange because, yeah, it hit me so hard. And even though I was like trying to tell myself, you know, maybe it's in your head, you know, I'm like, it's just it was it you know my my body was done and uh and it it i've been through so many hardcore phase for the past two months and uh so yeah i'm, I'm happy i don't be able to sit in with you for an hour like i couldn't be there like that like like three weeks ago i couldn't see it have to like constantly move and stuff it's just so anyway uh long story short um I think that going now to Europe, and I wish maybe I would have lived before, but I, I just did another painting this month because I, I really wanted to do this painting that was supposed to be in my show, but I didn't have time to do it. So I, I did it now. Um, but now I'm ready to go. And I think this this two months in Europe are going to be good for that, like, you know, reset and um, being inspired with new ideas. Um, also, we're moving to Arizona after um, when we come back, we're leaving California and, and going to. Um, live in Arizona so I'm super excited about that because I'm going to be close to all my Cowboys friends and um, I'll be able to you know go back to the subject a little more and and uh, set up a lot of cool exciting things uh, and getting ready for my next show because that's kind of what's up there you know it's like thinking of the future already 
<laughs> Brilliant. Where where's the next show happening? When's that happening? Oh, so I'm I'm challenging my gallery and um we're gonna do a tour. So you know, I was I was in a rock band, so I had this. I'm like a handsy guy. I need I need to move, and um, I had the idea of of making a tour, and uh, so it would be the idea would be to have um, New York, you know, Chicago, Austin, Nashville, Denver, uh, Phoenix. You know, do like every day, and then maybe three or four days apart from each evening, and we bring maybe ten of the major work. And we do, we, we pick a place, you know, maybe we rent a place or we, you know, work with a gallery or something, but mostly we'll be renting a place, put up the show, people come, you know, they see the artworks, people are interested in buying, they can put their bids or their names if it's a draw or whatever. And then we pack everything, go in a bus, next town. And then we do that for a month. And so everybody across the country can see the work in the flesh. Awesome. Um, and then at the end, either in LA or in Scottsdale, where the gallery is, we do the actual final where we pick the names, we do the auction like we did here, but after a month of kind of like everywhere on the road where everybody's seen. So it's going to build up this like momentum of, of you know, excitement. And, um, and I think it like you were exactly like you were saying before, um, the fact that, you know, people can't see the work is very frustrating. And, and at my show, even though a lot of people were uh, flying in and we had, I don't know how many people came, it was a lot of people. And, uh, and so to think that we can do that and people there in New York or Chicago or whatever, they can see the painting, it's great. Cause we're gonna, at the end of the day, instead of 1000 people sing it, maybe it'll be like 10,000 people that saw the paintings. So it's cooler. And, uh, and it'd be exciting. I kind of like to always bring stuff that I was experiencing in my band in my painting life it's it's kind of cool so yeah that's, that's awesome. that, that might be 2026 yeah your your band by the way uh, is awesome i mean looking at some of the looking at some of the music videos um i was talking to my team about it and saying no you got to check out check this stuff out and um it, it just so rocking so just so professional just so awesome it's some really catchy tunes on there as well. I have no idea what you're singing because <laughs> I don't speak French, but uh, it was just, um, yeah, you're, you're a talented guy, man. You're a talented guy. Uh, let me ask you, when, when you, when you first started this, you know, eight, uh, uh, 10 years ago, or, did you have any idea that you would be where you are right now? Zero. Like zero, literally, literally any idea. Um, yeah. Cause I, what happened is that I was in the band. I had a life in France. Um, I was doing okay. I was directing music video, you know. But something in me was was not happy. Like I, there was there was another dream that I wanted to to go after that that was not fulfilled. And so, yeah, when I want to turn yeah 33, 34, That's when I came to America, um, with a dream of doing something else. And for some reason instead of going up, everything went down. And so I went through divorce and, uh, you know, music video business was stopped the band. And yeah, it's starting to, it's starting to go down. And I, I really ended up, my wife and I, we were going through, yeah, hard times, no money. We freaking like, we moved back to our mom in Arizona. And so at this point it was like, what did I do to survive? <laughs> it was not even like, you know, how to make a career. No, no, it's like, a, how do we, you know, find money to eat and, and pay the bill? So wow. painting was my last resort because I knew I had this skill in my toolbox that I could use. And when I found out the subject of the Cowboys, I decided to go at it because I, something spoke to me that maybe I could do something and I was looking around and I, buying magazines and looking at art, you know, Western art. And I felt like maybe there was something I could do different. So I just gave it a try, desperate, because I didn't know what else to do. And, and I was like, whatever, I'm going to just paint that because I, that speaks to me and I love to paint. And I'm at a place in my life where there is nothing else I can do. So I'm just going to do that. And I started this and then slowly, you know, starting 
selling this painting there and there and and it, it started bringing a little bit of money and it was super exciting enough to be like all right let's keep going and you know slowly and then instagram started building up and blah blah and then you know prrr, start piling up and and uh so yeah like eight years later when i did this show last month it's just it's crazy to like think that it, get, it went from there to there it's just incredible mm. oh it's 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 an incredible level you've reached um and so you would then consider yourself successful right this is this is this is success right now yeah well i guess <laughs> <laughs> How do you define success? How do, how do you define that? Um, I think it's, uh, sorry, I'm staying for a second. I'm sorry, my back. Um, sure. I think success is kind of, it's a two, it's a two sided blade because um, there is your personal success and then there's uh, a success uh, that is going to make you uh, survive in this world and, and be part of this world at a certain level. Um, and that, that really depends on, your expectation from what you want from from this world, and, and some people will be like, you know, I, I have a piece of land and I live there with my family. That's my success, and and maybe they don't make money, but they're happy, and that's key. That's number one, you know. And then you compare to somebody who has a freaking mansion up there on the hills and and has twenty cars, but they're miserable and they do drugs and they're you know. So then you don't want that kind of success because that's that's that doesn't mean anything. So I think success is is a balance. I think recognition from a large audience is 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 a good way to call it success. Because when when you do something that you think is good deep in your heart that you love, and when you look at it, you're proud, and then you realize that other people likes it too, and that brings you income as well. You can feed your family and be happy. That's it. You know that's. I think that's success enough. And of course, there's this, you know, we're in a society when you're always more. And, you know, like when I finished the show and I sold this painting for half a million dollars, a lot of people came to me like, next time I hope it's a million, right? And you're like, sure. <laughs> but why do we even think about that? You know, and it's like, that just happened. It's insane. And I'm not thinking, oh, I hope, you know, but that's what people do. And somehow it's good. You know, you want to always push further. That's human nature. Yeah. You, you, you break the record of the sprint, you know, next sprint, you will be faster. But um, it's to me, I think, I don't think of oh, my next show. I hope I'm going to sell me a, a painting for a million dollars. That's not what I think. I think, I hope next show I have better paintings because ah. that's my problem. That's my problem. And that that's yeah. it. Like the money that's gonna go through, I don't care. This yeah. that's a secondary problem. It comes after. But the number one problem is the quality of the work. And to me, it's always how do I beat myself? That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And so that's gonna be my work. It's like how do I create better image? How do I like create things that are better? I, I love that. It's really balancing the outward with the inward. And so, you know, that's something that I've been really exploring recently with myself, you know, asking myself, like, what, what do I want? What, what are of my goals and dreams and aspirations? What is that version of success that I've been chasing? And I've come to realize that it's actually an internal feeling of how you carry yourself through the day. It's, it's not, it's not necessarily what it's who. And as soon as I twigged on that, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just going to show up today and do my best. And then when I put my head on the pillow at the end, I know that I loved my people. Like I, I, I really, and I had some moments there that were just key where I was present. That was such a thing because I was, you know, speaking of anxiety, man, like I was that anxious kind of hamster on the wheel going, gotta go, gotta go, gotta get this done, gotta get this done, organize this, do this, send it there. Oh, what if that doesn't work? What? And just, it's, it really is a, a sort of a fear in a way that starts eating you from the inside. But as soon as I'm like, no, no, I'm just going to show up. I'm going to focus on one thing at a time, do my very best, be present. And then that, I, and I love what you said as well. It's like, don't focus on that money part. Don't focus like, hey, if it happens, look, it probably will happen. But if, if you're chasing it, it seems like it, it'll, it'll almost just lose its, its luster in a way. It's, it's not. I mean, yeah. again, as, a, as an artist, um, the, everybody... Of course, everybody's always looking for making a success. 
making money. It's it's the human nature as well. It it's normal, but it can't be what you're after because that is definitely not the right path. Mm. And um, you know, if you're an artist and you know, there okay, the path, there's a path, there's a dirt road, and it it cuts in three. So there's one with an arrow that says money. The other one with an arrow says work, and one was like quality. Uh, you have to choose where you go. Definitely don't go to the money route because it's not going to lead you to money. You just fall in a hole. So I think you have to take the route of quality, work, then go through it. And then I'm sure at some point, you're going to meet the route of the money. You know, it's because it's normal when it's good and everything flows and it's natural. You know, money comes and it's it's good. Uh, but again, it's not a finality, and, you know, it's, uh, it, it, I was telling my wife, like, we're like, we just bought this house. And to me, almost that's, that was the goal of my whole life to like own a house with no debt, no rent. It's just, that was it. And I told her, I was like, if from now on, everything stops, like I don't, you know, sell paintings anymore. And I have to like, I don't care because we have a roof forever. And that was it. That's like, I somehow deep inside accomplished something that was important for me to like, yeah, you know, own something. And so that's all. That's my vision of, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I made it somehow. I bought a house. <laughs> Maybe people would laugh at that. But to me, it's very important because, you know, it means shelter for family. No matter what's happening, we have a roof and that's it. So, yeah. Yeah, man. That's that's incredible. Yeah, and and I I I've I've got a similar goal as well. It's it's important. I don't think it's a little thing at all. That's how you that's how you love your people is provide that for them. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Man, listen, you you inspire the heck out of me, bro. You really do. You you show me, and I know you show thousands of other people. You know what's possible when you've got your head straight and you're you're really focused on the right things. You have a subject that you're passionate about. And you just, you don't miss. And, and I, I'm just, yeah, I, I, I look at your, your work, your, your profile on social media. And I was just there as I was, I was watching that, um, that unfold just through, you know, what you were sharing with us on the socials, just going, yes, man, that's so cool. Because for me personally, you, you set that bar so high, it's that point on the horizon. And I'm like looking at it going, all right, I, I I actually need to dream a bit bigger and then lock in and focus on the day. But it's it's just incredible. So, bro, thank you for being you. <laughs> Thanks. That, if you keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Um, but listen, thank you so much for spending this time with me here. Thank you so much for being on the Creative Endeavor. Well, thank you so much for yeah putting all that together and 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 keep you know bringing the messages out for everybody. So. Cool. And say hi to all your students for me. I will. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Creative Endeavor podcast. A huge shout out and thank you to Mark Maggiore for joining me. If you're not already following Mark, I hope you are now. You'll find those links in the description down below to his Instagram and his website. Make sure you go and follow him there. And I'd love to know what you thought of this episode of The Creative Endeavor. Hit me up in those comments down below. Let me know if there were some takeaways here from you and what you think about some of the topics that we discussed here, like AI. Now, look, I know this comes up time and again. You're probably sick of it already, but I'd love to know what you think. Is this a threat or is this an opportunity? How do you see it? So hit me up in those comments down below. Now, of course, if you want to come back and see more episodes of the podcast, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and click that bell notification icon. And of course, you'll be the first to know when I drop another one of my oil painting or drawing demonstrations. I upload plenty of those to this channel as well. But I'm going to get out of here and get back to painting. Thank you once again for joining me. And I'll see you again in another episode of The Creative Endeavor.